Shopping for symbols can be a totally confusing and overwhelming trip if you've never done it before. You know, you walk into a music store and you head back to that symbol wall and you're staring at this gorgeous display of shiny metal plates and you have no idea what you're looking at. The only thing that currently makes sense to you is that there's smaller symbols and then there's bigger symbols. So this particular video is just to sort of help you out, give you a little bit of information and uh, a little bit of education on symbols so that you at least have a little bit of ammo when you walk in there and um, you know, you know what to look at and how to actually start choosing the right symbol. Now, if you're graduating from your very first set of symbols, perhaps it's um, maybe just a set that came with your starter kit and you're looking for like a next level up kind of deal, some, some good intermediate symbols. The task is a little bit easier in that situation because there's a lot of packs that uh, companies put together that will include a set of hi-hats and a ride and maybe a crash and perhaps maybe a free crash if they decide to, to throw one in there. And um, they have a few packages to sort of design towards those types of drummers. And they're typically sort of classified by weight. So there's thin and there's medium and there's heavy, you know, depending on what you want to play. However, the whole game changes once you start shopping for high-end symbols because now your range is this big. Like there's, there's an overwhelming set of options out there for you as far as high-end symbols. So after you get a little bit of experience on the kit, you know, you've been playing for a few more years and your ears start to develop a taste for the type of sound you might want to hear out of a cymbal. Um, then it, it kind of almost narrows the playing field a little bit. Um, but there's a lot of stuff. There's tons of stuff to consider once you start shopping for high-end cymbals because the options are ridiculous now. So, let me just give you a few tips on cymbal shopping so that when you walk into that drum shop next time, you're going to know exactly what to do to uh, choose your next individual set of cymbals. All right, so you saved up some coin and you're ready to graduate to your first high-end set of plates. And now you want to start actually looking at some serious high-end cymbals. So there's some things that you need to consider when, uh, when you go to do this. Now the first thing that you want to think about is application. What are you going to use these symbols for? And basically it just boils down to what, what type of drummer are you? Are you sort of, you know, one of these one lane rock drummer, gospel drummer, whatever? Or are you uh, aiming to be more of a session guy? You want something a little more versatile? Um, all of that stuff you want to be able to consider. So think about the application first, and, um, and that'll help determine at least the weight of symbol that you're going to start with. Now, if you're a heavier rock type of player, then you're obviously going to go with something medium heavy to heavy, because you're going to want something that's going to cut through all of those guitars that you're going to be playing with. If you're mainstream, pop, country, um, you know, whatever else, kind of mid-playing field type of thing, then you want to go with maybe sort of a medium weight, medium thin, somewhere along those lines. And of course, if you're a jazz drummer, then you might want to go with something a little bit thinner and, and washier and a little bit more sort of flexible and pliable that you can... Uh, make some good music with. The application can also help you to determine the size, you know, what type of, or what size symbol you want to, uh, you want to go with, 16, 17, 18, like how big do you want your crashes, you know, what size ride do you want to go with. You know, depending on the weight, sizes are kind of flexible, you know what I mean? It, it's personal preference, really. Some drummers out there only like to use big cymbals, and then others, you know, if they're going to have a bunch of cymbals around, 
the drums and they want a large range. Anyway, you can start with a 16 and just kind of work your way up. But um, weight comes first and then you can consider the size after that. So the next thing to consider is what company? What company do I go with, right? There's no shortage these days of companies out there. Used to be there were just three big ones, Peisty, Zildjian, and Sabian. But now there's, I mean, they're all over the place. Like there's a million different cymbal companies out there now. And they're all making good stuff. Like everybody's making some, uh, some decent products out there. But, you know, you can choose one particular company or you can mix it up. Like if you're not worried about going professional, who cares? Like it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference if you want one from one company and one from another. If they all work in your kit, then ultimately it doesn't really matter. But, you know, if you want to narrow it down to a company, that can easily be done. Like I started playing Zildjian cymbals because uh, Omar Hakim was my hero at the time. And he was playing Zildjian's. So I just went that way. Like, it's just that simple. The next thing to do, which is really great these days, you know, every company has a website. So visit a couple of websites, you know, and give yourself a little bit of education on, um, on their symbols. Take a look at their lineups. Every company will have at least four or five different lines of symbols, and they're all classified by genre, basically. Um, and then with each one, there'll be different weights and finishes and, and all that kind of stuff. So take a look at their lines. All of their lines on their website, all their series, will have a description for what that series was designed for. So, um, so you can go there and you can check it out, read up on them. And then take a look at each of the individual symbols. Take a look at the crashes and the rides and the hats and, you know, if they got effects symbols on there. Just look at everything that they got. Most of the major symbol manufacturers will actually have a sound page where you can go there, you know, throw some headphones on and, um, and sample some of the symbols that they, um, that they have on there. And it's a good way to at least get an idea of what these can, um, can sound like. Now, they won't always be 100% accurate because the fact of the matter is with a lot of symbol companies, the consistency can be a little bit shaky. So, you know, if you hear one symbol that you like on the website and you actually go and physically hit one and listen to it in person, it might not be exactly the same thing, but it, it will at least get you in the ballpark. Peisty, I'm going to give Peisty a plug here because they probably have the most consistent symbols on the market. So when you sample one on their website, when you hit one, it's going to sound exactly the same. Another great thing that you can do when you're looking at symbols is just take advantage of YouTube. Um, the best resource, I think, for shopping for symbols on YouTube is mysymbol.com. I would sometimes spend an hour just checking out symbols on, uh, on mysymbol.com. Just type in whatever model you want. And, and you'll see somebody on there, most likely, um, giving it a good playing example for a couple of minutes. So you can hear it in different situations. You can hear it on a set of, on a set of drums and stuff. It's a really good way to get a good idea of what the symbol that you're interested in sounds like. So the next thing you want to do now, of course, is head over to a store and try some out. So when I'm shopping for symbols, there are three things that I'm looking specifically for in each symbol that I try out. And I call them the three illities. Playability, crashability, and versatility. What I'll typically do is grab a symbol, put it on a stand, use two sticks, and I'll stand in front of it and I'll just play it. I'll hit it as if I'm playing it on my kit. And I'm checking for a bunch of stuff, man. I want to do some swells on it, some cymbal swells. I want to hear how well it opens up. I'm checking for stick definition. I'm checking the crash, um, subtle crashes, hard crashes. Might play the bell a little bit. Um, I'll check for consistency. 
around the cymbal, so I just sort of played all around it lightly. Um, things like that. I'm the type of drummer that loves playing cymbals. I love what you can get cymbals to do when you, uh, when you play them. So, you know, if I'm going in and, and checking cymbals out in the store, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with it and actually, you know, play these things and hear what they can do. So there are typically three types of finishes that you're going to see on cymbals. There's a traditional finish, there's a brilliant finish, which is like super shiny finish, and there's the unlaid finish, um, which is basically what it sounds like. Like it's not laid at all, and those kind of cymbals are designed with a specific uh, purpose. but Traditional finish is probably the most popular, I would say. Um, brilliant finish. Brilliant finish cymbals are a lot brighter, so they, they have a lot more high end to them. And then unlaid or unfinished cymbals are the complete opposite. Like they're super dry. You hit them, they say what they want to say, and then they just leave immediately. So whatever flavor you're down with, you know, by the time you actually start shopping for high-end cymbals, you're going to kind of know what you like by that point. And um, you'll, you'll sort of gravitate to, the, to the, uh, the type of cymbal that you want to use on your kit, whether it's, you know, traditional or brilliant or one of these dry type cymbals. So keep all that in mind, you know, when you're shopping for crashes and rides and stuff. And... You know, again, consider the weight of the cymbal. Super heavy cymbals will give you tons of volume, lots of sustain. And then thinner cymbals will be the opposite. They're explosive off the top, but the sustain is really short. So, you know, depending on your taste, you know, you're going to know which one is, will suit the, uh, the style that you're looking for. Medium weight across the board will be the most versatile for you. And, uh, and the only difference from there will be the, uh, the type of finish. So I'm just going to leave you with that, man. I mean, there's a ton of information that I can fire at you. I mean, this video could be four hours long, you know, if I wanted to include everything. But there's, there's enough information online, things that you can find out on these websites, like the proper descriptions on every symbol on every website. Research your companies. Again, um, there's definitely no shortage these days. Peisty, Zildjian, Sabian, Meinl, UFIP, Istanbul, um, tons. There's tons out there. Check out all their websites. Look at their series and then narrow it down. See which ones might suit your playing. Then check out the individual symbols. Hit up mysymbol.com. Look at some samples. And then go in uh, to your local music store and just start hitting on something. So I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to call this part one. Um, I've decided to split it up into two videos. I'm going to do a part two where we're focusing more on just shopping for hi-hats. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching. Like. Subscribe. See you next video.